to order, please join us in this. Judge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And welcome to all our guests. Nice to see people. Do we have any additions to the agenda? Well, Madam Chair, I would like to add one piece to the agenda this evening uh, as it relates to the state of Vermont. Um, it, I received a call yesterday. Uh, apparently the state of Vermont is planning to put in a parking area of some sort for um, sports people or people who want to picnic or hike up on the top of Lilith's Pasture Road, uh, above any of the homes, well, way up on the, well, I, I'm sure was the privately held land from, uh, that was uh, sold to the state. Um, Mr. Rittenauer called me yesterday um, on that, and I, I did call the chair to see if I was just missing something that the board may have done in the last year or so. Um, and it apparently is, um, they're bringing excavators up on the road as we speak. They were up there today, they were up there yesterday. Um, and I just wanted to give Mr. Rittenauer and per, perhaps uh, Mr. Hicks an opportunity uh, to discuss it. I would step off the board for any discussion that I might have because I, I live there, I'd have a conflict and I certainly have interest. Okay. Um. There's no objection. We'll add this under the highway superintendent's report because David will have a lot of information to report. Mm -hmm. I have a motion to add it. So we'll it's second. A second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. We're talking about Lilith's pasture. Right. Okay. I have no chair's remarks. Um, Open public comment for items not on the agenda. I'm new, I'm new to all this. So yeah, we know. just added it We're to the agenda. Okay. The agenda. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, approval of minutes. Regular meeting on October 19th. And the budget meeting on October 20th. We can take them together or separately. It's up to you. Um, I have you, no. You requested that we have Thomas instead of Thomas. Yeah, well, it's T. I, I, I'm okay with that. How about top bill attendance? Yeah, well, that, I can. I can. Uh, <laughs> all right. Did I ask this question <laughs> about why there isn't a true interest? Yes, you did. I did? Yes. Wow, that's shocking. <laughs> We thought it was quite. We thought it was quite in depth. It was an excellent question. Yes, oh, you did. I think I was like, really? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I would move that we approve the minutes of October nineteenth and October twentieth as presented. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion, Michael? Tom? No. Jean? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Tom? Aye. Okay. Um, highway superintendent. David? You come up in the middle. Wherever you want to be. Over by the mic. That might help. Alrighty. Uh, the new truck is here. It's able to run we've got a few more things to add to it we did sell the old truck uh, I got another grants and aid for forty five hundred dollars for next year uh, now this sand prices for this year last year we paid 875 this year it's 1050 the other one's 13 next year will be even worse everybody's running out of sand there's one that didn't even bid from town. So, uh, 
And how many yards do you use? About a thousand yards. When we do budget again, I'm going to have to discuss that. That's, yeah, yeah. that's a big difference. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Franklin Road culverts all in and all set. Yes, I want to commend you guys on that. That is a work of art. It's smooth. It looks great. Uh, I do have one question. The loader is coming up to go off warranty. Do you guys want to purchase another one? To go on it? I can give you some prices. Because I've got some today. Uh, one year coverage for a premium plan is $5,225. That covers everything, all the electronics. Then there's a powertrain and hydraulics for $3,275. Then there's just the powertrain for two thousand four seventy-five. Well, we can go to a two-year coverage for the premium. That's all the sensors, wiring, all that. Six thousand one fifty. Powertrain and hydraulics three thousand eight fifty. And just powertrain is two thousand nine twenty-five. So, the first price. Does it include powertrain? It it's for one year. It does. The premium it's, it's does. Everything. That's everything. Okay. Or then the next one down is just powertrain and hydraulics, no okay. wiring, no sensors. The stuff that's going to go. Yeah, the stuff that's going to cost you yeah. is the stuff that you've got to buy the premium plan for. Yeah. That's where they get you. Yeah. Well, the, not much difference between a one year and a two year yeah. on the premium. No. no. So if I can find six thousand one fifty, you want me to have it added, Michael? I would say yes. Yes, Maybe, but definitely whatever you recommend. Okay. Do you want a motion or just a consent? No, nope, that's fine. Okay. Uh, the only other thing is there should be another round coming out for small equipment we can get through this grant stuff. And I'm gonna to try to apply for a jumping jack. And they'll pay 80% where it's 20% compact. Yep. Great, thank you. So, other than that, any other questions? What's a jumping jack? Compactor. It just bounces up and down. We get the plate, but we don't have the. Okay. You play a better compaction with yeah. the jumping yep. jack. Okay. Okay, now we're on to the Lewis pasture. Yeah? Sure. Yeah. It's, uh, it's my first one of these, so I'm not really quite sure <laughs> what to do. Um, so, I live at the end of Lewis pasture. I'm at right now, I'm at the place out there almost five years ago. Um, funny enough, my two neighbors are here, so that's kind of nice. Um, under the impression, talking with the state forester, because I saw an excavator there on Monday, there making the road more passable for vehicles and want to put a parking area essentially it's about a mile out into the pasture so my questions are coming with this because we all know this safe about a huge chunk of land out there who is responsible for maintaining it policing it there's a gate there currently it's not locked but it does stop a lot of i guess riffraff from happening out there and whatnot and according to the state forester it sounds like there's going to be more gates out there and locked so i i know it's a town road but the town doesn't do anything with it because i maintain it tom and i do so i'm just kind of got a lot of questions if this gets opened up to be more passable then where does the maintenance and the policing and I guess the safety come in? It's only a town trail. That's right. It was, it was you classified the town trail, what, 91, 92? Yeah, 95, 96. Okay. It's okay. But the, the question becomes, and we understand it's a trail, and that, right. uh, let, let me be clear Adam maintains the road. So <laughs> about it, let's be clear. If there's going to be increased traffic, and there will be, and increased wear on what Adam is doing to maintain the road, 
and the state's opening up that area for the public to access, the question becomes, at what point do the owners have to continue to maintain the road? When it's when there's two families living on the on the road, that's one thing. Um, but when you start getting, that's why when they were going to put the fair up there, that was something that we had a concern with too. At what point do we? Where does our responsibility end on maintaining that? first two tenths of a mile or a tenth of a mile, whatever it is up there. Vincent? Yeah, I also talked to uh, the Aaron Hurst, the state forester, uh, in charge of the project. Uh, he said that they right now what they are doing is to try to get the road dry so that they can get um, dump trucks up with gravel and so forth. The primary thrust of their, the state's move probably isn't so much of, to get the ability to get lots of people up there. They want to log next year, and not the, not the old Weinstein property, because that's pretty, that's pretty well made. That's pretty well. <laughs> been completely washed out. There's nothing there to, um, to log. But former other parts of the wildlife a refuge of the, the Roaring Brook, have been landlocked. And this is giving them the opportunity to, uh, to go in and log. So I think pr primarily what they're interested in is, is setting up the road for the purpose of, of I'm sure you'll be very happy, logging. Um, uh, he's had to put up with me logging for the last year and a half. Uh, the, the, so, I am, however, very concerned that more people will start using it. I mean, up there already, people go up and, and, and target practice, and you can hear AR-15 type things firing all, you know, all the time. Uh, I I've, I've have felt restricted in my ability to use my land because of that, those kind of activities, because I, I don't know who's shooting or where they're shooting from but we can hear it. Uh, and there's been a traditional problem of, of my small vandalism and stuff. When the Renaissance Fair, people had stuff up there stored. It got burned and, because there's no ability to police. The important thing, I think, and let me say clearly that I am very much in favor of having the state own the land. Uh, it's a, it is a good thing. But the, the town needs to question uh, when the road will be open. I, I personally think it should stop, it should be closed after hunting season and not open again until June because that road, no matter how they get any better, there are springs all the way through that hill and it's, a, it's an ice sheet. And when it's not an ice sheet, it's a, it's a bog. In fact, it got thrown up by a trip for, because it, to a trail because some church group went up in a van and got stuck in May and got stuck in the mud and, and the town had to you know, get them out. Uh, the, 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 I don't know the truth of what it is, David will probably know better if he's still here, yep. um, that Aaron said that they, because they put in big water bars yesterday, draining all that stuff into my property and cutting swaths and making it impossible for me to use one of my logging roads, which they said they will, you know, they will restore and put back as to what I would like. But uh, right now, it's because of these huge swales, it's not passable by any anything other than very heavy equipment. Uh, the if the town has any authority, uh, the Aaron said that they were going to respect what they thought was the right of way, which is uh, three uh, three rods, two, uh, two rod, two rods, which is which makes it thirty two feet. Thirty two feet. They've certainly gone past eighteen feet from the center, sixteen feet from the center. Uh, 
to, to cut holes into my land and stuff. But uh, as much as I hate to say it, I think the town needs to become involved. Mm -hmm. David? When Munson just said that, I was thinking it was only a rod and a half. Well, when, when Lindy was, was having not. some issues a few years right. ago, it became a two rod. I remember that. Oh, okay. I, I don't know if it is a two rod, but that's, you know, that, that was the issue going back yeah. to 2001, 2002 area. Well, if they're going to start changing stuff, I hope they're going to follow their rules for the stormwater runoff. <laughs> so the well, town don't have to go out and do anything. Right. Adam, if I could, yeah. Madam Chair. Yes. You know, Adam put a had a put a bar in, in up there, a, a water bar up there last year because, and he had to dig it deep because it was coming across and flood flooding him out when it was turning to ice, so he and his couldn't get down the hill very safely. And that's something that I think the state needs to look at. The other thing, no no offense, Munson, um, but with the logging that's gone up there the last year, year and a half, and Adam put all the fill back in there, mm -hmm. that road got absolutely pounded on the pond side, on the westerly side of, of the road. Um, and, you know, coming in, it was really bad, and I know some vehicles have had to have axles replaced because of it. Just, if I could also be clear, uh, because I agree with you, the responsibility for repairing and, and, and restoring the road is just awesome. Uh, they, however, right. two things. One, it has been so wet that the logging has taken much longer than, than they, and secondly, they can't really, it should be done. My part should be done in a couple of weeks, as far as I can tell. Um, but restoring it uh, when it was all as wet as it was, it was not possible to. That's under, that's understandable. So it, 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 it is still me. on. It is still on the agenda that that road should be restored. I, I don't think Sir Sassamo has been responsive to calls of the made to the company. Right. What well, what they do is they wait till the end. But they, they don't want to the call. They, yeah, they could return the call. Okay. Adam, I'm sorry. I took no, a no, it's fine. I, yeah, I, th I think that's it. I mean, my only question, last question about it, there is a gate there currently, and I compare it to kind of the top of the basin off of Puckle Hill. That gate mm -hmm. is essentially locked a good chunk of the season. Um, I think it's mud season. I think it's open in the summer and winter. I think it's locked. It shouldn't be locked. It's, it's not supposed to be locked. Okay. They just don't realize it. Oh, okay. Probably should have said nothing because it's TV. So about a couple of years ago, they did take it out. No, they, no, no. Somebody I know. went out and took it out. And we have put a new gate up there and everything. Had the to get, had to get our part timer come right. in with his welder and weld it up. But that gate should stay there. Yeah, yes. they intend Absolutely. to have it stay. Yep. The state yeah. intends to have that. No, Lilith's Badger Gate is unlocked all the time, for the record. I was talking about the one on Basin Road. Oh. That gets locked. Oh, yeah. So that's what my question is. What's the difference between that gate and the one at the end of my road and why that one wouldn't get locked in the off season? One's Had town property, one's not. Well, no, it had to do with changing over to a trail. He could yeah. put a gate up, but they can't be locked, according to the state. Mm -hmm. Where that one is a town force, it's town owned. Yeah, okay. But their older way permit said they're not supposed to be on the roads during wet seasons. If you look at their older way permit, mm -hmm. it's supposed to see that. And, you know, the, the, the ATVs go up in the spring, they, they cause a lot of havoc up in that mm -hmm. forest area, too. When it's wet. Yep. What would you like us to do, Adam? I just really wanted to bring it to attention, and I, I'd like to understand what the plan is going to be out there in the parking area. That's my concern. It's going to be the traffic, the safety. I'm afraid it'll become a dumping grounds. It's really quite far off the road, and who's going to police it? 
maybe I'd like to do some research on that. <coughs> One other point, it may not be the state's intent to have it become a public recreational area, after, you know, but once it's cleared up there and once they, the parking areas, and even if it's for heavy equipment, I'm sure they're not gonna restore grass and trees and other things that were on it that they're taking out to make that parking area. It's gonna end up being a place to go. Oh, I have no doubt. Yeah. And, and in fact, I believe that, that they believe, the state believes that it, it's a, uh, a, a nature wildlife uh, area that people should be able to enjoy it in some fashion. And that's, I think, where they come from to do all that. Um, for anybody's information, um, the Aaron Hurst and his boss are going up there tomorrow. My forester, George Weir, has gotten in touch, he's supposedly getting in touch with them and may uh, go up there specifically about these water bars on, into my property, but in general to get more information, which I'd be happy to let Adam know and Tom know and anything that I find. Yeah. It, one more question. If, they, if they're pushing the water over onto your property, is that going to, and this, uh, this is a, will that leach down into the brook that fills up the pond on the west side of Lillis Pasture? There, most, of the, most of the water bars go, if you're going up, go to the right. Mm -hmm. So they go into my property right. and then we'll, we'll go down obviously into the swamp that, that, that drains out through your land. Yeah, yeah. There is a water bar at the top by the, um, uh, by the landing where the logs are put which is draining the other way and draining behind your house. Yes, yeah, and, they're and, my property. And right now, because of all the wetness, it's not soaking in. Right. Uh, that, I believe, is temporary, though it doesn't help the trees much. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can find out. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Yes, thank you. I had, couple, feeling better? I had a couple questions. <laughs> okay. Don't know Just about that. Questions. Well, like, like Munson said, I'm happy it's the state that bought the land yeah. out there. It's the best thing that, that happened. Jeff? Uh, I had a couple of questions. Uh, David, can you just spend a couple of minutes describing the different classes of town roads and more specifically, what is a trail? <laughs> It's still kind of a town road. Mm -hmm. You don't have to maintain it other than you have to have it passable. But to whose standards passable? Yeah, what does passable mean? Right, to who? It doesn't... Yeah, yeah is it passable to a logging truck, to right. a... Or a small car. A, a two-wheel drive. Car. Right. Yeah. Class four, you somewhat keep it maintained, but you don't plow it keep gravel then your class threes most of ours are all class threes mm -hmm. class two is Huckle Hill, Pond Road and Tyler Hill. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't really feel it should be a private landowner's burden to maintain a town road um, rail. Well yeah, any, any town road, period, whatever class. Um, but, it, so a trail, can you, uh, you know, as a town say, you know, we talked about mud season and winter and so forth. You know, can you, as a town, can we say, oh, like we do with cemeteries, you close them on a certain date. Um, and essentially say all bets are off after a certain point, um, you know, a calendar date. I, I know like class fours you can because it's not maintained, so I'm not sure and, on the trail, and, and, but and I wouldn't see any difference because it's trail even is worse. a lower class than right, class four. Lower, right, Yeah. And I think that's why you're allowed to have a gate, but you can't lock it. No, I, I don't see why you could ever lock a gate on a town yeah. 
grow to what whatever class. Um, I mean, who who would have the authority to lock it? Right. Nobody. No private landowner can. Right. Um, so, I, I probably should know this, but does anybody? How far is this state new state land from Huckle Hill Road? Roughly. Hmm. Roughly through the woods. They're on the trail. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, two miles, maybe. Okay. Two, three. So we don't really know what the state's intent is. Um, how how much of the other property they own up there is this back up to? A lot. That's all the road. They, they own some up on top of West Road, so it might all back up all the way over to the town. Mm -hmm. Forest. Mm -hmm. I think in prior years, my understanding was that uh, the town uh, allowed uh, a couple of people who are off West Road or off or whatever because they were land. I couldn't get. They wanted to log. But they couldn't get their logs out. They were allowed to cross through and go down that way, um, and and they also did uh, put in some water bars without again, <laughs> without telling me and draining off into my property. Um, this happened probably five years ago when I went up, and suddenly there was a, a skitter sitting on my property. Mm -hmm. and I talked to David, and he didn't know anything about it. I know there's some towns you'd be on their roads and it'll say, you know, it'll be a sign this it is not maintained after November first through May first. But it's not maintained at all. Well the town doesn't maintain it period, so um, I don't know. I, I think eventually we as a town and the residents that live on it and the state, we need some kind of resolution at a certain point. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, the Lillis Pasture Road has been a town trail for eons. It was a road before. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. yeah, That's why it's private, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, the, there was some discussion with the select board back in the early 2000s. Um, there, Mr. Skibanowski was on the select board at the time, and he had suggested that the land, if you read the minutes, be transferred to the owners. Throw it up. Hmm? Throw it up, it's Yeah, throw the road up, and that was not approved at town meeting. Um, well, what were the arguments against just but, saying, okay, you guys uh, take it? I only remembered the highlights. So. I, but my, if, it's, if it's not a recollection, it's basically a concept that there have been uh, fires up there, mm -hmm. and and they did have to go up with uh, tankers and stuff uh, in very dry seasons in the open area where um, actually what was happened, what set it off was. They were logging, and literally a spark from yeah. from the uh, skitter or whatever hit a rock and started fire. It was about ninety-seven. Yeah, it? and and so the concept of keeping it at least passable is for fire protection. But I mean that that would be for the uh, benefit of the landowners, not the town. Uh, well, and now essentially, I mean. Right. Well, it's a benefit to the town not to burn down. Sure, but <laughs> it, it would be an essential benefit to the landowners not to have their land or their trees burn down. Yes, certainly. Um, I, I don't, in that case, I don't see why the town should have to um, expend any extra money for, I mean, I, no. Uh, I don't know if the town needs a 32-foot right-of-way on the way up here either. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think anybody's talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> and and it, essentially, because the state buying the property up to up to the my edge of the property has moved the private sector a mile closer to the road. So there's only oh. 800 feet, maybe, uh, from your place up to the top of the road. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. somewhere around that. That's yep. what we're talking. That's what they're improving in order to get. Uh, uh, they want to get gravel up to fill the places that they're creating drainage and stuff, which is in and of itself is not a terrible thing. But th th by extension, creating a parking lot and area. My feeling is you're going to get people who are going to want to take their snowmobiles up there, mm -hmm. and th that's not going to happen because that's a mess. And as it indicated earlier, those people that are, are lodging, and while they have to fix the road when they're done, um, it creates a real problem on that travel portion of the road during the course of the spring. That lands through the summer if they continue that logging um, and creates issues for the people that do live on the road that have to repair the road, waiting for them to finish. Right. Michael, do you have anything to ask? Yeah. So who owns the road then? The town? Or? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. The owner. That's a smiling question. Sure. So, you know, we talked a little bit about the state um, and so forth. And I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm kind of cynical, but I don't foresee the state chipping in in any way financially to, <coughs> to resolve any issues. Um, I, I kind of think it is part of their responsibility, but um, I can foresee as a town, we probably need to, uh, we need some resolution um, and maybe revisiting what was talked about 20 years ago. Um, we need to look at it again. Invite our state rep. Mm -hmm. Since we're talking about the state. Yeah. There's a um, transcript of the, of the um, reclassification in the town of Texas. Tom, do you have any questions? No, I'm, I'm, I, I thank you for your indulgence. Jim? No, thank you. We will be getting back to you. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. <clears throat> I move to approve payment on the following warrant. Nine T accounts payable, forty-seven thousand four hundred fifty-one dollars and forty-four cents. Forty-two S payroll, seven thousand four hundred seventy-three dollars and eighty-five cents. And forty-three S payroll, nine thousand four hundred nine dollars and fifty-nine cents. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please signify the same name. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Tom Adam, move for Um, so just to let you know, the 2022, um, Useful Planning Grant Outdoor Recreation Master Plan application has been submitted successfully. Um, currently closing up the 2020 Martin E, um, site, um, encompassing Grant and reconciliation, which is waiting on the document. Um, so the fire station RSP has gone out to the fire station to see what additional work needs to be done, and it looks like it's going to need a little bit of work resurfacing, um, repairs, and to the concrete and the stucco, as well as uh, a little bit of finish work. Work can, can be done. So I just want to let you know that I'm going to be adding that to the RFP. 
I did get the initial amount for the page you fill program. I think I submitted that to you. I think I'm going to take that in order again. So I just want to let you know that other information I also need to apply the, the years that the program has been running. And, um, and that's all I have for now. Thank you. New business, DV Fiber Annual Report. So <laughs> I guess I will start. Um, thank you for um, allowing us. We won't take long. Um, the DV Fiber uh, sent out an annual report, which you should have gotten, uh, in, to just highlight what's going on even past that. Uh, DB Fiber received, uh, uh, DB Fiber is 24 towns getting ready to provide internet to unserved and underserved areas. Uh, we received a $4.1 million grant, and what that will go for is uh, high level design for all 24 towns to create an internet uh, system for all 24 towns. In the first phase, we are, there are six towns that are severely unserved and underserved. That's Stamford, Jackson, Jacksonville, White, Jacksonville's not a town, but Whitingham. Uh, Wardsboro, Reedsboro, Marlboro, Halifax. Those will be, those, uh, that phase one, they will be engineered for the process. They've already had a poll study, all those six poll studies are done. Then poll studies will be continued in phase two, both the poll studies for the rest of the 24 towns and the engineering for the rest of the towns. The idea is uh, to, to prepare to make a, uh, a plan that will uh, be able to be moved on. Uh, and that will that will start in, in 2022 and, and the plan for getting to Vernon's unserved and underserved is uh, probably toward the end of 2023. There are the point about it for um, Vernon specifically Vernon is basically pretty well served uh, if not cheaply. Uh, as people uh, always are complaining about both Consolidated and Comcast. But the chances of Consolidated or Comcast uh, going to serve, there are 80, approximately 80 towns and businesses out of the 800, uh, 888. 888 domiciles and businesses are unserved or underserved, which means they basically could get email. They're, they're, they're well below the the, the e even poor requirements by the federal government of 24, four, uh, 24 download speed for up. Uh. So we will be, TV Fiber will be working to connect those 80. Now in order to connect those 80, we're gonna have to run fiber past a lot of people <laughs> who already had stuff, but if they wanna join TV Fiber, uh, and the price works for them, there's no reason they cannot join. So, and, and partially because the un unserved are uh, most distant uh, other than um, uh, Broadbrook, which is a, a kind of a separate little thing, but Sa is it Sachs? Bas Basin Road, uh, um, which is up. So anybody on Couple Hill, if they want to, can take it. Um, Laurel Ledges, uh, um, Stony Acres down in the camp, um, the end of West Road, I'm not sure about, um, so Sack would be there, and Broadbrook. Those are the four or five that I know of. There's 83 homes out of 888 Which is almost that 10%. get TSL, if they're lucky. Um, so the, our goal is to DB Fiber's goal is to get those, to start with, those unserved and underserved. Um, we're, our original business plan, which was developed by Wyndham Regional Commission last year, um, called for 10 years, and we're going to 
you know, this is with the um, the grant we got. We're set up now to get another twenty million. Anticipated a twenty million dollar grant at the beginning of next year. And that's from the. I'm not sure if it's the Better Build Better Back or ARPA, uh, American Rescue Plan Act. That's what the four point one million came from. Um, in addition to that, from the CARES Act, we got eighteen thousand. Like ten thousand from that and some other funds. So you can't get money unless you have money, and so these grants are going to help us and position us for future applications for loans and other yeah, funding. On, on the assumption that the whole project is about fifty million dollars, we are now pretty close to having half of it, twenty-five million. Once you start building and start having cust actual customers, then you can take out, out revenue bonds. Because in Vermont, you, can't, you only can use revenue bonds. You can't use tax money. So this is severe, quickly jump-starting what's going to happen and, and make it possible that within, instead of 10 years, maybe five, five years, years. Yeah. Uh, that that DB fiber will be able to serve anybody uh, in the 24 town that wants to be served. And DB fiber is uh, uh, we're beginning to have some paid employees, but up into uh, contractors. Uh, consult, co contract. We're never going to have employees. But yeah, we will not have employees. All of this is being done by volunteers. Uh, the people from each of these 24 towns we meet <laughs> monthly or weekly depending whatever and it's it's really kind of an extraordinary group and I, I, I think it's something that uh, will make a, a big difference not only in Vernon uh, but for the whole of uh, southeastern Vermont. Yeah, um, we unlike the commercial entities that provide fiber or internet service, we're not going to be, um, we don't need to make a profit. We just cover costs. And being a part of DB Fiber, Vernon gets to help make those choices. Munson is our voting member, I'm our alternate. But you know, we have 24 voting members on the governing board and about 60 volunteers, uh, uh, you know, a total of 60 in addition to the you know, including those 24. So I don't know what he does, but I know I'm on the communications key <laughs> committee, and I mean, we meet twice a month. I could bet. He could <laughs> No, he does, he, he does motions and seconds. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's uh -huh. his job. But no, he's, he's got other, other roles. So um, we're very involved. And, and we hope the town remains active and involved. I know Tom worked hard in Bourne to get uh, fiber uh, for the town, um, and so he's, he's quite knowledgeable in how this works. Just for example, uh, while we are 24 towns, the, I can't make another, the Vermont State Internet uh, Commission, essentially, I can't remember what the name Bakuda, of it is. Vermont, Vermont One of those names. Commission on no, Communications Union District Association. Uh, has already said that they will uh, use their buying power to buy fiber for the entire state, for all of the, 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 the nine different districts. Yeah. So that's, that's a huge thing to be able to add uh, the buying power of the state for the commission to keep the costs down. And fiber, you know, it's going to be a supply problem like everything else is for the next year or so, but this is exactly the time that we should be planning. On a, on a minor note, which is just, I'm just giving you a heads up. About a year ago, we were asked by uh, the, the, the people who were beginning our, our planning where there was generators in the town for their generators. And my, my understanding is that because 
when the power when the power goes out, while fiber does not use a lot of electricity because it's not electrical driven, the switching stations and a few other places will need to have backup power. And it's my understanding that there is an idea that uh, generators will be put in this area. I know there is one, uh, to my understanding, again, at the fire station. It's something that's worth keeping in touch with DV Fiber about. I, I've asked for how much power essentially we'll need. We'll find out from um, our, our uh, construction partners, uh, Great Western, uh, GWI, Great Western Internet, uh, they're a main corporation that's going to be doing the building and designing. Uh, but it's a small thing, but if we can keep ahead of those, uh, those things and we can keep telling you, it will be good. It's not going to cost you anything necessarily, but if it's a question of 50, 50 watts versus 75 watts, we can keep ahead of it. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, any questions? I, I do want to thank Munson Brana for hey Brana, <laughs> for you know all your efforts on this project. We appreciate it. I'm good. I thank you both. It's a good undertaking. I I came into this knowing zero, and now I feel like you know I still don't know what the difference between a megabyte and a megabit and a terabyte and a terabit. <laughs> but I don't really need to because there's lots of people on the um, uh, that we're working with that know these things yeah. and it's like a real honor to be a part of it. And, and I'd just like to say, as some of you may know, I've been working on getting uh, high-speed internet to Vernon for probably 12 to 15 <laughs> years now and it's really exciting that this, this is something that I can see coming to fruition. And if there's any, this is a, um, I'm sorry, you know, this, if there's anything that came out of this horrible pandemic, it's the awareness, of anything positive, it's the awareness of how this is needed, how our broadband, mm -hmm. our internet has services currently failed us. And the governor is on this, the, um, the whole state, um, you know, government is behind this. They developed a new board, the Vermont Community Broadband Board, and they they're active. And so it's it's really um, that, that to me is about the only po positive, other than the vaccines. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both. You're doing a thank great you. job. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. We appreciate your support. Forty. Oh Good evening. Uh, I've been asked to share with the town tonight some of the uh, performances and uh, just an overview of the assets that are held at Edward Jones uh, that I presently manage. Uh, so I prepared for you quite the uh, stockpile of reports and um, I'd just like to draw your attention, if you will, to the first report. It's going to be an overview, I'll do that first, of the eight different funds that we are presently managing. It says Town of Vernon on the very top. It's not the one that says Town of Vernon General Fund. Okay. Um, I would like to draw your attention first, if we could, <coughs> to page it is page number four of five. It has a bar graph on it, ladies and gentlemen. It's got a green and gold bar graph on it, page three of five, in that report that says Town of Vernon. Are we there? Yes. Getting there. Okay, very good. What I wanted to draw your attention first, folks, is that when the town asked uh, myself and Edward Jones to manage the monies, um, it came with very strict stipulations as to what type of investments could be held in each of these funds. Um, so uh, there's been questions over the years, why don't we have this fund and why don't we invest in that index fund and, and various different investment uh, strategies. However, 
uh, that's an item that the select board would have to go back to and review the town's and I don't know what the word for it is, charter, whatever your investment policy is on what funds, what investments can be held in each fund. So we're not gonna go down that road today. That We can hold that off for a snowy day in, in January. But uh, so this bar chart basically represents where the diversification is with the town's monies. Now, as of uh, the close of business today, in this overall account, we're managing $3,835,084. The bar chart represents that 92% of the monies is in fixed income. Fixed income, ladies and gentlemen, represents cash and bond funds. Extremely conservative, okay? That's the way the town wants it, um, and that's the way the town will get it. Uh, I believe that it might have been back during the tech bubble uh, back in 2000, 2001. I believe that the town might have been invested in uh, securities, equities, and when that bubble hit, a lot of people maybe panicked at that point. It may even have been earlier, it was before my time, uh, but from that time forward, there, the, the town become, became very risk averse, let's call it that. And so we decided, the town decided to stick with bonds, something very safe and secure. But I will talk to you about a little bit about the risks involved with a bond portfolio. But be that as it may, the town right now has 92% of its portfolio in fixed income between bond funds and equities, uh, between bond funds and cash. All right. The biggest of those, and well, let me just switch over then. Uh, to page 11 of 25. It's really the meat and potatoes that I think a lot of us are looking for tonight. And so rather than keeping you all here till midnight, uh, we'll cut to the chase first. On this page, 11 of 25, it's showing you that since May 18th, 2017, how the performance has been in this overall portfolio. The return on investment dollar-wise is $581,872 to the good. The annual return is 3.63. You'll see that in 2019, the return in dollars was $231,894, while that $150,000 that you see in parentheses represents the money that went back into the fund that Oh, by the way, when the interest and dividends come from these various accounts, namely the large general fund, that goes into the town's uh, bank account that Cindy can use at her discretion. In 2020, 34000 came out, but the portfolio grew by $326,000, uh, 169. You may be asking yourself, Gordy, what happened in 2021? We're down 0.8% to which I would just bring your attention to the way bond funds work. Okay, so be, being that 80% of the portfolios in bond funds, when the Feds raised interest rates, even a tick a little bit back in February and March, you need to remember that there's an inverse relationship between the rise in interest rates and the value on paper of a bond. Okay, it will go down. When interest rates rise, bond fund values go down. On the converse, when interest rates drop, which they were doing like a rock, that's why you were seeing the portfolio going up in 2019 and 20, okay? Also, another factor, and this might be more of investment 101 that you're bargaining for, but the other thing that will drive your bond fund prices to go up is if the stock market starts to take a hit, okay? People get fearful. Gordy, I don't want to lose my money. So they get out of the stock market and they put their, their money back into something more secure like a bond fund. Well, law of supply and demand drives that bond fund price up. Okay, So be that as it may, the value on the bonds, and I'm spending a little bit extra time on this because so much of the town's portfolio is in bond funds that you need to understand that even though it shows a negative 25 uh, 1,600, it's on paper, okay? In other words, 
The value of your bond may drop, but as long as you hold that bond to maturity, you get your full par value back, okay? So bond prices rise and fall. I like to say it as a slow rolling tide, depending on a bunch of various factors in the economy. It's not that jagged up and down that you see in your maybe your 401k, your stock market portfolio that has a whole lot more volatility, all right? So we're not seeing that. We're just seeing, again, the value of some of these bonds have dropped over this year. Nothing to worry about because, again, when these bonds mature, we're all good. Now, let me just bring your attention to, go to the general fund, the, the Ver, uh, town of Vermont general fund page, if you, uh, or folder, if you will. Uh, Gordon, Gordon? Yes, sir, go ahead. Yes, Jeff. Are you taking questions? I'm absolutely, this is a discussion. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to interrupt your Please. honor roll. I know, I, well, that's me. Uh, before we get, yeah. get away from it. Okay. So, back to page 11. Okay. Annualized return since May of 2017 was 3.63%. Right. Do you, <clears throat> um, and I don't want to hold you to it, do you have any estimate of what the uh, average inflation was over that time yeah, period? Yeah, so that inflation, that's a great question because what we're seeing now is just skyrocketing inflation, mm. okay? So we're saying less than 2% is what I was told was inflation during that time period. We're already hitting 5% and I heard some people talking about the price of sand today uh, and the cost of anything we were talking about, the price of oil. Inflation is going to hit us and so, hit us pretty so, good. So should that, uh bring up some questions as to a, a, a change in uh, investment philosophy. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be frank. I yep. think that um, this portfolio objective is too uh, risk averse. Risk averse, okay. Um, I, I mean, to me, th this is some funds that the town is not gonna need tomorrow. Yeah, and I don't really know the history of what happened, yep. whether it was 10, 15, 20 years ago, right. or whomever got, you know, maybe uh, uh, the investment objectives were a little risky and the town lost the money and people kind of freaked out, so to speak, but um, to me, I don't know. I think it would be worth looking at other municipalities and say, you know, what, what, uh, how, what percent you have in the fixed income versus equity, um, and look at a little longer term. I, I just, I don't want the t town to cheat itself out of some return. I, that I, I couldn't agree with you more. The best hedge against inflation is equities. Okay, yeah. you have to, we, we have to make more than three point six three percent. You know, as people as well, I have this discussion every day in my office, people who think their money is safe in the bank right now, making 0.012%, and you're losing 5% purchasing power every day. Right. So I would agree with you 100%. When we get to these other portfolios, the cemetery portfolios, and the, the uh, uh, Alice J. Brooks, the um, A. Perry Fund, the Marsh Fund, you're going to see that those do not have the restrictions on them. I'm able, and you're going to be able to see that these funds are up 10, 13, 15 percent. Okay, but this is a conversation that you and the select board need to visit with Cindy to see about changing our investment policy guidelines for this fund and being willing to take on a little bit more risk in this portfolio. And doing so, my commitment to you and the town and being a, a you know a resident here is I'll meet with you guys every month to go over your portfolio when you take on that risk. It comes with some more, uh, I'll call it responsibility and communication. Yeah. Because I think what happened in the past, and again, Jeff, I, I don't know for sure, but the people that I work with, and clients that have come to me and said, Gordy, I lost so much money in the market, I ask them one question, did you get in or get out on that dip? You know. And those people tend to be those people who panic and invested with their heart and not their head and they sold low because I think again the market hit another record high today okay and it's continuing to do that and the economic indicators that myself and, and Edward Jones is following is that a lot of 
good reports are coming out right now. Third uh, quarter returns are, are positive. Uh, it depends on what the feds are going to do about uh, 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 rates in the coming future. So there are a lot of variables going on, not to get on too much of an investment tangent, but yes, the short answer is I agree with you, okay? But that's out of my uh, pay range. That's, that's a conversation that the select board needs to discuss how much, because right now in this portfolio, and that's why I was just going to draw your attention to that uh, general fund, because Jeff, this, this, this one here, if you turn the general fund page and you turn that to page three, that's what we're talking about. That's your, your, your I don't want to say beef, but your concern. If you look at page three of 16 on that Town of Vernon general fund, 100%, that gold bar represents your assets, okay? 100% is in fixed income, 11% is sitting in cash. Cindy likes to keep three to 400,000 in cash for emergencies, if you will, okay? And then the other 89% is sitting there in bond funds. Um, but, but yeah, again, as a town, um, I don't, we're leaving a lot of money on the table. Um, emergency, I mean, we got, what three point four million dollars sitting there? Yes, sir. I don't. I can't see any emergency this town is going to face that all of a sudden we're going to have to get three million dollars to deal with. Agreed again. And so, please remember, ladies and gentlemen, that these funds are liquid. Okay. So if we did decide to reduce, if the town decided to reduce some of that cash on hand from three eighty to just eighty thousand dollars and all of a sudden something did come up and you needed $200,000, I'd sell a bond and you'd have the cash in two days, okay? Yeah. Um, so that's always something to yeah, keep yeah, in mind. And I think as a town, we were probably in good enough financial shape that if we needed a loan for something, I think we could probably get oh, a I, loan. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I don't get it all, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <coughs> yeah without a doubt. So, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm certainly not arguing with you, I'm just- Understood. I, I want, just to be public and, and clear to anybody yep. that cares and is watching that, mm -hmm. again, we're in great financial shape and we could be even better long term. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, any other questions? All right. I'll, I, and I'll try and abbreviate my, 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 my discourse here, if you will. Um, I come before the the town select board every now and then because a bond matures in here and I need again by order of the policy I go through uh, Cindy first to see if she needs there are usually in increments of a hundred thousand dollars if she does need that money for any specific purpose if not I then come before the board and to get the green light or red light whatever it's usually green to go ahead and reinvest that money just to give you an idea what's coming up though, there are four bonds that'll mature next year for $100,000 each, one in May, one in November, another in December, one actually in April. So at that point, I'll come before you with more of those assets to reinvest. And Jeff, if we could, through the next several four or five months, make some changes in uh, the investment policy, then by all means, as this money becomes available, we can start moving into different uh, we, we equity We can do funds. something different other than saying, okay, firm, firm credit sounds fine. Yeah, I, right. I mean, I, I, I agree. You. I think we gotta do something different going forward and not I agree. just say, okay, that sounds fine, Gordon. Yeah. Go ahead and put it in another firm credit bond. Yeah. No, we're, we're, you know, personally, <laughs> I think we're leaving a lot of. I mean, I, I, I borrow money directly from Farm Credit, yeah. a lot of money, so oh, okay. so I appreciate yeah. seeing it, but yeah. not uh, oh. my my responsibility is town to. Yeah. The whole thing about bonds, <laughs> remember, folks, this is not get rich money. This is stay rich money. Okay, mm -hmm. what people are looking for and what the town, you know, and people have been spooked by and and rightfully so at times, is how do I keep what I have? Okay. But now, as Jeff pointed out, we're facing some rises in inflation and we don't know how long that will go. So we need to maybe to be good stewards of the assets that we have. We, we may need to be doing, we need, we need to make more than three and a half, four percent in a year. But that comes with risk. Okay, 
Let me just, any questions on this? No. I'm going to quickly, very quickly, remember there are eight accounts that we do manage. Uh, I don't know which one you have on the top of your list, but I'm just going to, I'll go to Scott and Noyes, okay? Uh, Scott and Noyes Fund. Uh, Sandy, is there any way that you know what this, how this was set up or what it was set up for? Um, it was, it was from Mary Scott, it was directed by the probate court in 1927. Um, it's not easily held in trust and invested income only to be used annually for preaching the gospel and for the Advent Christian home at South Vernon. Okay. <laughs> so... Again, in this in this fund set up what 1927? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's a while back. If I bring your attention, I'll just cut to the chase on this. Page nine. It, of, it went through a stock market crash too. <laughs> yes, it did. And you know, it's a great page nine of fifteen, guys. Is a great illustration, if you will. It shows a bar graph. Uh, you know, of the last four or five years, the blue line, the green line on there represents assets added to the fund and you can see that it's flatlined no assets are going in there there's no contributions but the interesting thing is the blue line the blue line will look a lot like your own personal portfolio that shows back in february march of 2020 it took a real dip okay but this also could exemplify what the market's done since back in 1927 1940. remember investing in the market is like going up an escalator with a yo-yo Okay, it's constantly going to go up and down, but if you have a good quality diversified portfolio and you stick with it, you're going to see gains. So let's draw your attention then to the bottom right corner. Uh, annualized return on this is a far different cry than the town uh, report. 15.6% a year is what we're averaging. 13.9 so far this year, 28.8 last year, 29 the year before. And uh, where is that coming from? So if you flip the page real quick, and this will be the longest uh, description of these funds, but you're going to see what Jeff was alluding to. There is a mix here between fixed income funds, corporate bond funds, high income funds. You'll see that there are some uh, growth in income funds, the George Putnam Balance Fund, the MFS Diversified Income, and then a bunch of equity or growth stock funds. Uh, MFS stands for Massachusetts Financial Services. They're one of the oldest mutual fund companies in the country. They do a great job. And Putnam uh, was owned here and I'll, before I came on board. And I've used and I've kept on some of Putnam's good funds. The other thing that I'd like to just as a select board remind you that what I've been doing with these funds is the, these funds were purchased many years ago. They were bought as a share mutual funds. I don't want to get too deep if you don't understand this stuff, but they were bought with an upfront sales charge. One and done. But what I am now able to do is if I see a different MFS fund or a Putnam fund doing better than another, I can exchange them at no cost to the town. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is keep the cost of investing to an absolute minimum. And you do that by exchanging fund for fund. It's like bringing in, Mike, a, a shirt into TJ Maxx and it doesn't fit this time. I gained a few pounds. I swelled up like a tick, whatever the case may be. But I needed to exchange my shirt. It doesn't cost anything to make an exchange. The same thing works like that with mutual funds. Okay? So... And the shirt fits better. And the shirt fits a lot better. <laughs> it was the COVID pounds, I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and, and, and let me speed it up, and I apologize. Uh, Alice J. Brooks, same thing. Alice J. Brooks, can you find her? Yeah. You got a short description on Alice J. Brooks? Yep. Yeah. She left 5000 in 1941 for the relief of four children and aged persons in the town of Vernon. She left how much? 5000 5000 The fund is now $145,000. Okay. Alice. okay. <laughs> that, 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 that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, again, average annualized return since May 24 of 2017 is 15% a year. This year we're up 13.4, last year 27, almost 28, and 26. And again, folks, just flip the charts and you'll see the different funds in there. And I won't go into the details on anything else in there unless somebody has a question. Okay, let's move on. Let's hit the March fund. 
Mars Fund, Sandy? Uh, that was a $2,000 legacy uh, in 1835. Wow. The interest is to be split between the churches and towns. Okay. What is that? Churches. 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 So, just a quick, you know, again, this one here is averaging 10.7. This year it's up 12.5. If you flip the page from 7 to 8, you're going to see this is all American funds. Uh, it's the way basically I and Edward Jones inherited it. I kept it in American funds so that I can rebalance there and reallocate uh, free of charge. Um, and Cindy, all of these funds, and just a, a side note, all of these funds are not set to reinvest. All of these funds we are holding the dividends and interest that then gets funneled over to Cindy and she disperses it however Cindy chooses to do that. But these funds came with certain criteria. They were set up by the, the grantor, whoever it was that set up this fund. Um, so once we've made the money, invested it, it's, it's out of my hands. Okay? So, Gordon. Yes, sir. Sorry to interrupt you. No worries. Um, so we got a number of different funds from different... <laughs> yes. So maybe, you know, my next question is um, why can't, I mean, certainly you can keep separate funds, but why can't we move towards a more uniform portfolio objective for all these funds? And we can. Instead so, of, I mean, you've got different objectives and if different you look, funds and yeah. for different mutual funds yeah. for different funds. So, so again, on the different folders, folks, if you look at the top, Let's see, it'll be the top left corner, you'll see portfolio objective, balance towards growth, uh, balance towards growth, um, balance towards income, balance towards growth and income. I would love at another time, uh, we could come in, we can sit down, we can talk about realigning the objectives on these funds and having Cindy in the room to find out what do we want this money to do? Uh, you know, is it, are we, Again, I just have to say, are we being good stewards of the money that we have here at the town? Are we allowing it to grow with taking into account its suitability, our risk as a town? How much risk do we want to take on? And what's the goal for the money? I mean, to set up a, a fund from 1927 or 1880, that's like, let's give this money to where it's supposed to go. Let's put it to work, you know? so. Again, as, now I'm speaking as a townsperson rather than a financial advisor, but uh, let, let's, let's see what this money is, should be used for rather than just leaving it here for another 100 years and somebody will have the same discussion. Sound okay? All right, so um, I have four cemetery funds, folks, okay? Four cemetery funds that also came with certain stipulations that the principal was to be left intact and the only thing that we could use the interest for the dividends were for upkeep of stone repair if I remember correctly lawn mowing and things of that nature um, and so Tyler Cemetery Fund in that fund right now we have and this again is on page 9 of 14 $177,494 in the Tyler Cemetery Fund. Um, you're seeing, you know, if you look on the amount added and withdrawn, about $7,000 a year comes out. It's probably going to the lands, uh, landscaping. landscaping company, okay? But here's the beauty of it, and I always love this part of the presentation, if you will. If you look from, well, 2019 on, $7,000 out, 30,000 gain, 2020, 7,000 in, in, went out, 23 in, 2021, 7,000 out, 23 in. So the bucket is filling a whole lot faster than we're emptying it. Um, and it comes to a point where, what are we gonna do when we got a half a million dollars in the cemetery fund, or a million? Um, so I think, again, following in line with what Jeff is talking about, What's the ultimate goal on this? Uh, I mean, do we redo everybody's headstones? I don't know. Uh, so it's just a thought. It's just a thought. But So needless to say, and then on the next page, you'll see that the funds are doing very well. I'll pick it up. I promise I'm going to speed up. North Cemetery Fund. Uh, that was a Tyler North Cemetery Fund. If you take a look at page 9 again, we have $34,000 in there. 
4,000 went out so far this year. Uh, we're averaging 8.3%, up 11. And I guess my question, Jeff, you know, if you just want to jot this down or Shelley or something, but with these cemetery funds, we have cemetery committees that I've met with in the past to talk about rebalancing these accounts. Again, at Edward Jones, we don't have what's called discretionary authority. I cannot make up my own decision to move you out of an income fund into a growth fund or a mid-cap fund or anything like that. My question to the uh, board then is, is it you folks that I would come to to make my recommendations to rebalance uh, these funds? Um, as the cemetery committee has a tendency to come and go, turn over, whatever the case may be. Could you check into that for me and let me know how that goes down? Mm -hmm. Okay. It, yeah, and I, I guess the other question is, we've got North Cemetery Fund, South Cemetery Fund, et cetera. We've got all these cemetery funds. Why can they not be consolidated? Is it because of the original grantor? Said a lot about the original money has to stay the same. Yeah. 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 You had certain people, you've got a list of who gave what. Okay. Some of your ancestors. Yeah. Well, um, I'm sure they wouldn't mind me yeah. questioning. <laughs> they probably questioned then. Yeah. My guess would yeah. be a lot of the people who were responsible for setting these up are no longer with us. They don't really seem to care. They don't care <laughs> quietly. No, I don't think so. so, and then just the last two, and then I'll really get out of your hair. South Cemetery Fund, to your point, here's another one. Why can't we consolidate all these cemetery funds as one town? Um, averaging 7.5 yearly, up 10% this year, been up 10% the last several years. But also notice, zero money is coming out of this. So are we not mowing the South Cemetery? Is there still a South Cemetery? Yeah, we are mowing it. Yeah. Cemeteries are paying for it. Exactly, Mike. Uh, maybe the other cemeteries are paying for it, and that's why yes. this one doesn't have any withdrawals. And then, fine. I, that's, I, that's where I'm going to get buried. So. <laughs> very good in plot there. So. All right. Well, I'll make sure if I'm still advisor that you have a very nice spot. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I want it mowed for free. <laughs> Will do. Um, last one, the A. Perry Cemetery Fund. This one's just been in, uh, it's a very small fund. What is there in here? Just about $5,000. The, yeah. Um, it's in one fund that I would be more than happy to welcome. Uh, doing a little rebalance on that, um, move some of this funny out of, money out of this uh, more conservative Putnam balance fund into a growth fund with Putnam and find some opportunity to grow this. But all of this could be a very moot point if the board decides in its wisdom that maybe we can consolidate these into one. But again, Sandy knows the town history far better than most. Um, if there are those guidelines and stipulations that it can't be moved, then it can't be moved. So. It's interesting that you have Alex Perry Cemetery Fund, and that's a private cemetery. Yeah. But we don't have Whithead, and that's a private cemetery. Yeah, I, I, I have no knowledge. <laughs> private cemetery money. I don't know. Well, a I lot of towns do that, and they put them in its perpetual care type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But it's interesting that we don't have Whithead. Yeah. You know? Any questions for me, and I'll let you move on to your next item on the agenda. I have one. Yeah, Tom. Um, on the fund that is to be dispersed to the churches in town. Mm -hmm. The Marsh Fund. The Marsh Fund, okay. Um, who makes the determination as to how much goes to each church? Um, let's see. I believe it's about $200 a year that's dispersed. And it's dispersed between the three churches. Equally, not they're not making a bundle on last the collection. Last year they made $65.48. Okay. So, okay. I have other questions, but not they, they wouldn't be <laughs> germane to right now. Thank you for the answer. It, it, it is a good question, though, because if you look at the last three years, you know, 170 in 19, 143 in 2020, and 162 went out in 2021. And we're sitting there with $13,000, and maybe we could be more generous. Who makes a decision is a great question. The Marshman Committee. Okay. Um, the interest to be appropriated annually. Yeah, the interest is the interest to be appropriated. Yeah. Yep. 
So whatever the interest yeah, is, what's right, 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 right. Okay, with that, I, I thank you for your time, and I'm at your disposal. Call me anytime. We thank you very okay. much. Michael, do you have anything? I don't. Jeff? Oh, thanks, Gordon. Huh? You're welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, BCTV contract? Select board members at one point in time that were really good about getting the DVDs and getting them to us, but then I don't really know where that went from there. Okay, That's so that if it's in the contracts that we should look at that we're not taking advantage of, it's in our in the contract. I believe that there's something in it. If not, their website says something about it. I, I read it somewhere when I was going through all that stuff. So they're asking for the two thousand with um, uh, which includes archiving on YouTube and Brattleboro TV.org that's um, BCTV well I'm um, yeah I'm yeah. reading their actual website um, The amount reflects one dollar per resident. Um, then they get information on what the actual the actual cost is forty seven hundred dollars for them to provide this service. But they are asking us for two thousand. There we go. If requested, provide a DVD copy. If requested. So no cost, right? Um, it says eight copy copies. Additional DVDs may be purchased through BrattlebaroTV.org. Yes, that's how I did last. I was saying if we're eligible for one, I think the library should definitely have one for residents that don't have internet or cable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we'd gladly, you know, archive them. We just haven't seen them in ages. So that's that part this is basically the draft I think well, that was already signed but they had changed the time frame because the work's going to be done in the spring so I think they had to talk a new grant well this is different that's not BCTV no oh no it's okay that's me down like, wait for you guys to sign later okay getting confused here so does that have a contract to sign on that one? This is a consolidated one, right? We're, we're looking to sign a consolidated. No, BCTV. We need BCTV okay. to continue their services, their contracts Very for the $2,000 a year. I move that the board renew the BCTV contract at an amount as requested, two thousand dollars for FY twenty two. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion, Michael? I 
Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. I don't know if I haven't seen you it. You haven't seen it. Right. Okay, we'll send it down. Um, what does it need to be signed by? Uh, There's only one signature, it looks like. I just got it um, last week. I don't know that there's a deadline on it. Yep. Can we hold it off to the next meeting? I think so. Okay, let's table that to the next meeting so we have time to read it. Like if we're gonna, we should get copies of these kind of things. I won't bow in anything. Pretty, yeah, that's, that makes sense, Michael. So those kind of things should really be in our packet so we can read them ahead of time. Okay. okay. Um, I have a funny feeling that. Alex is coming up for the grant agreement for dry hydrant. That's right. Oh, you're on, Alex. Thank you for waiting. Okay. So I got the um, I got the package back from from Troy at uh, Vermont Rural Fire Protection Program, um, and I know we had discussed a while back the um, the package or whatever, and I, I think we've hashed everything out. And I I had just uh, sent a note to to Shelley and just asked, you know, do I sign this or do I bring it to the select board? So. That's why I'm here. Oh, this is it. Yeah, that's what this is. Yeah, they rewrote the, uh, the uh, I don't know if the amount changed, but I know the, the time frame. Uh, there were some adjustments to that. So. That it shall provide up to $3,713 on a reimbursement basis to cover a portion of the expenses outlined. Grantee shall provide a minimum of 25% match or $1,237 plus. to vote on it, but none of us have been seen I'll it. run a copy of the, of the old one that had already signed. So this needs to be in by when? Um, I don't know if they, I didn't see a date of when they needed it back mm -hmm. by. Um, well, it says the agreement begins on October 15th and ends mm -hmm. on June 30th of 2022, so. Yeah, that's pretty much. Right. So do we have time to wait till the next one for Well, it began on October 15th. Yeah. So We're in. <laughs> I know, Michael, you might want to read. This is just a basic 2575 grant for dry hydrant similar to what you've had in years past. Yeah, yeah. yeah I believe the town has entered into, I think they worked for the same program before in the yeah, past. So. I think so. I remember it last uh, year before. I think it was Blodgett's Pond that they did. Yeah. How's the one up on Huckle Hill? The one up on Huckle Hill? I talked to Todd about it a while because they, I guess they technically own it, Todd and Tiffany, and okay. um, I'd like to get some maintenance done in on that, and they hadn't gotten back to me on whether or not that was something we could do right now. So. Did the board approve going for the grant? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the board approved the application going in. The application was approved, and then you just have this grant agreement so they can spend the money up front and get reimbursed. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, so I move that we sign the grant agreement, or the grant agreement be signed by whoever, um, as provided by the document from the Vermont Association of Conservation Districts. Second. Is there any more further discussion? I also uh, I have a W-9 form as well that needs to be filled out okay. for that. Is, so. is, there's one there. It's probably it's There's current. one here. No. What's okay. the date on it? I'm sure she must have. 10-27-21. <laughs> 
it's all filled up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. okay, all those in favor say no, have they saying aye? Aye. 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 Motion carries. If I sign it, will you type in the other stuff? Say that again. If, you if I sign it, will you type in the printed name and stuff? Thank you. Ugh. Okay, what's next? Um, Cleaning services. Cleaning services. Oh. Shall we run? Thank you for providing this to you, by the way. Uh, you're welcome. Would you pass that back? Yes. Would that go back to show you, please? Did you receive? The same bid. So this is all one bid. Yeah, it's, it's all one bid. The only thing that I had a difficult time with was um, with the snow and ice removal because there wasn't a set amount. And in all the past years, um, the contract has been by the month. Pleasure. Oh, so Did you finally read it? Are you going to read it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, okay. That's the pleasure. Those are the things that I used from the yeah, bit. We were supposed to get it this week. Here, since last meeting, we were waiting for oh, it. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm still in the mind that go back up to building again. And I don't know what that does if it snows. 18 inches before Thanksgiving, David. Um, it's to me. <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying. Parking um, lots will be plowed. No. That's yep. it. <laughs> He's got to agree to that. <laughs> and that's it. And the building hasn't been cleaned in over a month. A month. No bathrooms cleaned. No vacuuming. I appreciate that. But. Well, then the board can do what it seems fit. We will follow the leader on that. I, I will not, I'm not going to make a motion to accept this. Okay. So then, but this bit is just on the outside work. We still don't have anything for us. I know of somebody that's interested in cleaning, but not forever. It'd be like till the next fiscal year when hopefully there's a real plan. Um, I know we have a lot of contractors now that don't have their own liability or anything and we take the risk factor out. We shouldn't, there wouldn't be any employees, so it's just one person. Um, so I don't know how we want to play that because we've got nobody taking a bite on that and like I said, the building hasn't been cleaned in a month. And my bathroom in the library is the only one that the public's allowed in upstairs so i'm getting everybody it's not pretty sometimes <laughs> mm. 
so I don't know what we can do in terms of, I mean, this person is just like, wants to just kind of take this on on her own, temporarily, not a forever thing. Um, I'm not sure how that would work. I need to get more information from Cindy on doing something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, the person wants to submit, even if it's a one-page proposal, just something that we have that we can vote on. Okay. Okay. Table, put it back out. Let's see. Consensus to put it back out. Okay, um, I do not believe we have anything for executive session. Our next meeting is tomorrow night. Well, we do? well, if the board hasn't had a chance to review anything before the executive session, I suggest that we put it off till the next meeting so the board has a chance to review. Okay. Did everybody read? Okay. okay. Um, Let's go into executive session. Okay. So you don't have to talk in code. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that the board enter into an executive session relative to negotiating or securing real estate or. Yeah, that's all I can Okay, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Tom? Aye, I'm sorry. All right. Okay, motion carries. We are in executive session. It is 8.09. I'm still not used to roll call. Okay. Okay, we went into executive session 8.09, came out at 8.22, and no action was taken. Okay, motion. Two. Authorized for the survey. Oh, certainly. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, I moved that this, the board authorize the town administrator to seek out a surveyor to do a survey of property owned by the town um, off Fort Bridgman Road um, and to just to. Uh, provide meets and bounds of that property. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Michael? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Tom? Aye. Jean? Aye. And I'm an aye. Motion carries. Do you need another one on the other one? Or just tell them? Okay, very good. All right. Um, so we have a meeting tomorrow night for budget. And then we have a meeting on the 16th and a budget meeting on the 17th, which could possibly be our last one. Okay, Ma Madam Chair, I have to go into Berkshire County tomorrow afternoon, but I expect to be back in time for the meeting. I may be a little late. Okay. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Is there all those in favor, say my father saying aye. 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 Tom? Aye. We are adjourned at 825.